The Jared Kushner sell out America and prospects for world peace for $2 billion and nobody cares? Back in the back in the 1960s, after Kennedy left office, I, actually I believe it was the early 1970s when Richard Nixon controlled Congress, because Kennedy had appointed his brother Bobby as Attorney General, because Jack Kennedy, President Kennedy, had appointed his brother as the AG. Republicans, when they got power, when they when they finally got control of the White House and the House and the Senate, they passed a law saying. Nepotism in the uh, executive branch is now illegal. There are already nep anti-nepotism laws, you know, throughout the federal government. You, you know, if you're if you're uh, the head of uh, tax collections at the IRS, you can't hire your brother to to be your assistant or something. I, you know, there's already anti-nepotism laws, but these were very specific. This was to the executive branch. So when Donald Trump became president, and wanted to put Jared Kushner in charge of Middle East policy. In other words, a high-level position in the White House, sort of like, you know, Bobby Kennedy. They had to ask the Department of Justice, is this legal? And the Department of Justice was like, well, we don't care. I mean, you know, really, are you going to ask Bill Barr if it's, a, you know, if something's a crime? Really? This was before Bill Barr, but it, the same thing. This, this was Trump's DOJ. So he put, he put Jared in charge, and what does Jared do? Well, at that time... In 2017, Saudi Arabia was run by a guy named Prince Mohammed bin Nayef, also known as MBN, Mohammed bin Nayef. And his father, who was Nayef bin Abdul Aziz, was the former leader of Saudi Arabia. And his father's father, King, Abdu King Abdul Aziz, was his grandfather. So the guy running the country, his father had run the country before him, his grandfather before him, but he had a cousin by the name of Mohammed bin Salman who was salivating at the possibility of ejecting the current, you know, reigning monarch, as it were. And uh, Jared had, now that Jared had a security clearance, Trump tried to get a security clearance for Jared. They ran the process. They came back and they said, no way should you give this guy a security clearance. He is corrupt. He is compromised. His father went to prison. Um, there's a criminal history in his family. You, you should not be doing this. And Trump said, that's okay. I'm not only going to give him a security clearance. I'm going to give him the top, top, top secret, the best, the highest you can get security clearance because he's working right next to me and I've got, you know, the ultimate security clearance. And so now Jared has access to the information that in Saudi Arabia, this young prince, Mohammed bin Salman, wants to overthrow his cousin who's running the country. And Jared makes this secret trip to Saudi Arabia and hangs out with Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, as it was reported in the Washington Post by, um, let me just track this down here. Yeah, I'm missing the guy's name. Yeah, here it is. This was uh, David Ignatius in the Washington Post. This was right after Mohammed bin Salman staged basically a palace coup, put M the MBS, put MBN in prison, where he is to this day, and started arresting all kinds of members of the royal family and tossing them in, well, in jail in a fancy hotel. And David Ignatius of the Washington Post writes, quote, It was probably no accident that last month Jared Kushner, Trump's senior advisor and son-in-law, made a personal visit to Riyadh. The two prince princes are said to have stayed up until nearly 4 a.m. several nights swapping stories and planning strategy. Right. So now, with Jared's help and the help of U.S. intelligence, apparently, although Jared denies it, but uh, Vicki Ward, who's done some really great uh, reporting on this, uh, she just reported, quote, four well-placed sources say the primary reason Kushner has now received $2 billion is that he helped MBS depose MBN, knowing that this went directly against what U.S. intelligence wanted or thought was good for national security. Just to be clear, MBN, the, the guy who had, you know, who, who and his father and his grandfather had been running Saudi Arabia, was a longtime friend of the United States and was in tight with the U.S. State Department, U.S. intelligence, 
MBS, the guy who's now running Saudi Arabia, is, according to some news reports, moving Saudi Arabia closer to Russia and China. Once MBS took over, Donald Trump cut a deal with him to reduce the oil production of Saudi Arabia by 2.2 million barrels a day, which is, you know, consequential. This was back during the, the pandemic when the price of oil was $35 a barrel. They were trying to raise the price of oil, help out the Texas, Texas oil men. We were having bankruptcies across Texas and Oklahoma. So Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, he says, okay, we'll cut our production. Well now, and the production is still cut. Now Joe Biden is reaching out to him saying, hey, can you, can you go back to the production like it was before Trump cut that deal with you? And MBS is refusing to take his phone calls. Instead, he's hanging out with Vladimir Putin, or at least talking to him. Which raises the question. I mean, here you've got Jared Kushner. Uh, you know, his claim to fame was that he was a slumlord and his dad was a, a professional grifter who went to prison. Trump pardoned him, by the way. When his dad went to prison, this uh, PR consultant, as a family friend, said, uh, this is according to his father, said, quote, step one, this is his advice to young Jared now that his dad's in prison. Step one, buy a New York newspaper. Step two, don't be too particular. Any newspaper will do. Excuse me, step two, buy a big Manhattan building. Any building will do. Step three, marry the daughter of a rich New York family. Anyone will do. So he buys a building just a few blocks down the street from Trump Tower, gets Donald Trump's attention, starts dating his daughter, and the rest is history. Which raises the question, you know, there is this thing in the Constitution called the Foreign Emoluments Clause. Now keep in mind, Jared Kushner was a White House official, officially. And the, and the Emoluments Clause, which is in Article I of the Constitution, says, quote, no person holding any office of profit or trust under the United States shall, without the consent of Congress, accept of any present emolument, office, or title of any kind, whatever, from any king, prince, or foreign state. It looks to me like Jared Kushner sold out his country, broke the law, broke the Constitution, and damaged prospects for peace in the world by helping MBS rise to power and then pushing Saudi Arabia toward Russia just to get his hands on a few billion dollars. Isn't this at least remotely worthy of a Benghazi-style congressional investigation? Isn't this more important than Hillary's emails? Isn't this something the Department of Justice should be looking into? What am I missing here? Speaking of uh, MBS and war, I want to talk about war right after this break. Stick around.